This is a lesson on watercolor meditations and I do them every morning. It's part of my dandelion lessons practice and it brings a sense of peace and calm and allows me to set intentions for the day. And I'm sitting outside at my table in the woods and having my coffee and I have brought a book and I want to read to you something in the book. here. <clears throat> so it says, Zen meditation, Zazen, is the traditional discipline by which this contact with the innermost workings of life with our true self is made. There are, however, also other Zen disciplines spoken of as the ways, archery, no play, tea ceremony, calligraphy, even painting. For particular temperaments, these are equivalents, alternative disciplines to Zazen, yogas, one may well say, which, if seriously practices, practiced, are indeed ways to realization and to awakening. And these are my own words, also uh, to a sense of inner peace and calm. For me, and Perhaps for you, seeing drawing is such a way, a zenless zen, without oriental trappings, kimonos, folklore, or even bamboo brushes, a western way leading to the awakening of the eye for those to whom sitting motion, motionlessly for long periods does not come naturally. And this, these are my own words again, that would be me. <laughs> that would be me. And maybe it's you too. At the end of the day, you are likely to be dead tired, for seeing with pure, undivided attention is, and not only for the beginner, very exhausting. And I too will be just as tired, for all day I'll have to see through your eyes. And he's, um, Frederick Frank right here is talking about when he gives his workshops on seeing drawing. <clears throat> I'll have to see what you see. I'll have to see through 20 pairs of eyes, but even more, I'll have to identify intuitively and totally with the temperament, with the given of each one of you, with your particular muscle coordination, your aptitude. For if I do not, I shall ask you to do what goes against your nature, instead of bringing you closer to it, making you aware of your true nature, of who you might really be. Actually, seeing drawing confronts me cons constantly with the person I pretend to myself and to others to be, the person I may imagine myself to be, the one I strive to be. It makes me realize who I am definitely not, which is vastly more important. So this book is called The Awakened Eye and it is by Frederick Frank. And what I love about the way Frank approaches seeing drawing is that he approaches it as a practice, as a type of meditation. And as he says, we all have different ways um, of being still and quiet. And for some of us, sitting in zazen and meditating is not, is not our way. And I try it, and I do, I really like it, but it's just not for me. And I find that by doing my seeing drawing practices and my watercolor meditations and um, by being present in my creative practice every single day as a ritual, um, I, that is my way. That is my way. Art is my way. So it might be for you too and that's why I want to share my meditation practice with you. Uh, Every day I post my results for, for that practice on Instagram. Sometimes I do a live video of it. And that the reason I do that is in hopes that you will be inspired to try it, that it might be your way. And so I'm going to go back inside and I'm going to film 
my meditation practice and it, it is a ritual and and it evolves and they can because as we do something more and more we learn how to make it better for ourselves and how to be more true to ourselves and so my practice has evolved and and showing you my practice is only remember it's only one way you can find your own way or you can use my way and then and then it'll, it will evolve more into your own way so I hope it's helpful and after I'm done um, I will come back and talk to you about the different steps of the practice and some more particulars okay here we go
to go over my process with you, the process of my meditation practice every morning. And it's a little different feeling when I'm filming it, so um, I can't account for that. But um, how I begin is I open my paints, and this set is a set that I custom ordered from Kim at Wildthorn my dear friend, and these are full pans, except for the dark iron, of the colors that I really love the most. Um, they're all very neutral and soft and subtle and quiet and ethereal, and I love them. Even the darks um, that Kim makes are very subtle and quiet. <clears throat> so um, in this set I have Buff Titan, an Ochre Leger, and a Sun Gold Mica, Siem Brulee, Peach Agate, Dark Iron Glimmer, um, Gris Foncé, and Raw Umber. So those are my paints. And I, I basically keep water in a little spray bottle and I mist my paints. And that helps to wake them up because they've been sleeping overnight. So it just helps them wake up and be ready, um, instantly ready. So I do that. And then... I have this little teapot that my mom gave me. It's just beautiful. It's got this little uh, goddess figure on the top, on the handle, and I fill it with, with water. And then when I begin, I have a bottle of frankincense oil, and I put one drop in, in the water. And the reason I choose frankincense, I almost always use frankincense, um, and I have a little acorn on the top, and I just put washi tape around the bottle because I didn't find the vo bottle very pretty. <laughs> um, and I like things, you know, the, the aesthetics of things is important to me. So um, frankincense has this way of just lifting my spirit. And it's like divine light. That it would, that's what it smells like to me. And so it's very magical to me. And so that's, um, that's why I put a drop of it into my painting water. And then I swish it around in the teapot. And then I pour it into two pottery vessels. These were handmade by a local artisan. And they're these tiny little bowls. And this one is the one I clean my brush in. And then I have a smaller one that I use for clean water. So I clean my brush and then I dip it in clean water to, to continue. And you could use any, you could use a, 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 little, a tiny pitcher that would you, you would use for cream, for coffee and tea. Um, you could use a glass, you could use anything really, a, a beautiful bottle and just open it and pour. Um, it doesn't really matter. It, what matters is that it's beautiful to you and you enjoy its presence on your workspace. And then I just have a little crystal here. This is actually my burnishing stone, and I don't use it for the rice paper, but I just find it so beautiful, and I like to have it near. And then I have my um, bamboo brush. Um, it is, I'm not sure. It's, I've had this for a long, long time, and I honestly don't even remember where I got it. I think I bought it in Rochester at the art store. And it's just really nice for this practice. Um, I also sometimes use my squirrel mop or my badger brush. I mean, I just, but I really like the aesthetics of this brush and it's old and I've used it for a long time now, almost four years and um, it just feels like home. So I use this brush most often, I would say. Oh, and I forgot, I have this beautiful white feather. Um, that I use after I pour my, my water just to sort of w put a whiff of the frankincense into the air. And while I'm doing that, I'm breathing in and I'm breathing out and I'm paying attention to my breath and I'm setting my intentions for the day. So um, when I'm doing this, I'm not filming it. Sometimes I take quite a while to do that. It's an important part for me. So you could have any feather and just wrap it with, with floss or cord, um, a little bundle of feathers. Um, whatever, you know, whatever you have is fine. So that's what the feather is for. And then I open my book and I just crease the page so it lies flat 
and then I open my paints and again you can use any paints any paint you have you could even just use ink I mean ink is beautiful too whatever brings you joy and whatever you have is enough and perfect and then I begin to paint and I, I don't ever know what's going to happen um, I don't know what colors I'm gonna choose sometimes I use another palette you know but often I reach for these and I just start to paint and it flows and I, I pay attention to the forms and the way the color bleeds on the paper and the way the colors mix together. Um, I just, I really pay attention and I enjoy it and it brings me joy and it calms me down. The other important component for me is music and um, the music that you heard is actually the music I use for my YouTube videos that I get from Epidemic Sound. But when I'm doing it here in the morning um, on my own without filming it, I have a playlist that I've created of instrumental music that's very calming and peaceful to me. And um, I'm going to start listing the music. If I do live videos, I will list the music that I used. Um, there's just some beautiful music to paint by. One of my favorites is a recompos re recomposition of Vivaldi's Four Seasons by Max Richter. And I love the winter series, and I, I use that quite often. It's this transcendent music. It's really, um, it transports me to a different place. And so I, I'm really listening to the music, and it affects my brush strokes, and it affects, you know, the way I whisk my brush in the water, and it affects everything. So music is, a, is an important part of it to me. Maybe you like silence and you want to open your windows and hear the bird song, and that's fine too. But I do enjoy music. So when I'm done with my meditation practice, I rinse my brush and dry it off, and then I, I use my chop. And I have a video um, on my channel about making a chop and creating your own monogram. So you can watch that if you're interested. And I carved my monogram into this chop. It's made of soapstone and it's very easy to carve. Um, and this is what I use as my mark. Okay, so I use a stamp pad. Any stamp pad is fine. And then I look at my meditation and I decide where to put, where it fits into the composition and I add my chop. And then I also have this tiny little dandelion seed it's actually a flower, believe it or not. Um, and this is the when it turns into a seed and flies away. Um, and I bought this from Niko Neko Zakaya, and it is a, a wonderful Japanese stationery store. Um, but you can find any kind of stamp that's meaningful to you. For me, the dandelion is very meaningful, so I use that to add to my mark. And then I'm then I'm done, and I might take a few moments just to breathe. And then I put my things away and clean my bowls and wipe them out and they're ready for the next day. So that is basically the entire practice. So any of these things that might be appealing to you, you can try with what you already have. Um, oh, and I should mention too, this is a rice paper book um, that I buy from Blue Heron Arts. I believe they're $8. This is the small size. And I usually buy four of them at a time, and I think there are enough for like 28 days. And I love it because the paper is double. So this is one sheet, but it's double thick, and so the paint does not seep through to the other side. And it just has a lovely surface. Um, it's really beautiful, uh, and I enjoy it very much. But again, any paper would be fine, anything that you have. But I like to let you know what, what I'm using in case you're interested and, and you uh, wish to purchase these things to try. Or you may find your own that's even more wonderful for you. So it just, um, it's all part of it for me. So that's it, that's my practice. And I hope maybe you will be inspired to try a watercolor meditation practice of your own. And as I said, this is a one part of my dandelion lessons practice as a whole. Um, the other components are scene drawing, which right now I have many scene drawing books, um, but right now I'm doing my scene drawing or scene painting in this Lotus Blue Book Arts um, kata with handmade paper. And I use this um, to do my scene drawing practice. 
I also have a small handmade book um, made by my friend Carol Milron. She's a book artist, and I have used this as well. It's got many different papers in it. Actually, it's upside down. That I will use um, also for seeing drawing practice. Sometimes I draw my cat. <laughs> so this was a dead aloe vera leaf. Um, this was my foot because I was sick and I was sitting in my chair and I just drew my foot. Um, part of a flower. Um, my cat. So I, I'm always doing something different. My husband. It just depends on the day. My cat. I draw my cat a lot. <laughs> and I also have my bowl of treasures that I use for my seeing drawing practice. So that's another part of it. And then of course I have my morning intuitive drawing practice, which I have many videos on my channel about. And then I have my dandelion lesson practice, which um, what some people also call edigami, but it's a little different than edigami. And I have many videos about that too under the dandelion lessons videos. So many, many things compose my practice. And I do most of them every day actually. So. There's a lot of things to choose from, and one of them might be the perfect fit for you or all of them. So give them a try. I hope you'll give them a try. Thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. And wherever you are and whatever you're doing, I hope you have a beautiful day. Thank you.